So in today's video, we are going from this to this. Hello and welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Jochen Wiesma, also known as EJ. So yes, today I'm going to change the setup for my vendas. Uh, if you've been longer on my channel, I did this before, uh, sort of. I did change the setup, uh, I think about three years ago. I did try growing my vendas in a terracotta pot with uh, some inorganic media, uh, but I failed. It doesn't work for me. The watering is uh, too difficult to keep them nice, hydrated and drying up. So get, to get a uh, wet and dry cycle is, is not, not very easy in a, such a setup for me in this case. So before that and after that, I do grow my vendors uh, pretty well, I think, in glass phases. So I uh, will uh, link a video on the end of the video uh, in this video. If you are curious how I water my vendors, I made that video already. But uh, yeah, I'm really a big fan of growing them in glass phases. It's very easy for me. It suits me and it suits this growing space and my schedule, etc. So why the change? Well, the, there are a lot of pros growing in this setup for me, but there are two main cons. So there are two uh, things that I, uh, I wanted to change if I can, without having the, the setup uh, change too drastic. And so I think, um, I think I might have a solution for that. So first of all, the algae. Uh, you probably saw it already, but it's, it's very um, uh, algae uh, consuming. It grows very quickly in the setup because of the humidity in there, of course, and the light that is getting in there because of the glass. So I didn't came up with a plan to, uh, with a solution for this for years, but I think I have it now. So that's the first one. And the, the, the biggest inspiration for the chains is because uh, my vendors are growing fairly well and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, they're becoming top heavy. So yeah, that was something I didn't thought of when I started this setup. But yeah, uh, there, there will be a point where it gets so big that the glass faces, the weight of the face is not enough to keep them balanced. So yeah, uh, if I don't change this, I will be here uh, one day and then I will uh, at least have one on the floor because it's, uh, like I said, it's really, they are really starting to top over. So I thought, one plus one is two. We need a new setup and I want something uh, to protect them as much as I can from growing algae, especially on the roots, etc. So uh, let's see what I did. I came up with. So this is basically it. So the principle uh, of having a glass face will be the same. Oh, I see a metonia leaf in there that can go away. Um, so these will, uh, these are sort of the same as glasses. These are just a very big plant pots, as you can see. But they are dark. They are uh, a dark gray, almost black color. And that is typical the color that I go for for my plants. So these will suit my system and, uh, even better, I think, than the glass faces, it, uh, because I use these pots constantly. So that is the first thing. And also, you see this brick in there. And that is uh, glued to the bottom of the pot. So I can, if I want, I can, you can see, I can lift it easily. It's kind of heavy, that was the plan. But uh, I used uh, just the regular uh, glue that you use for your bathroom uh, as well. I'm not completely sure if it tucks it or not. I, I cannot measure it, so I hope that it isn't. And that's a bit of a risk that I'm going to take. But yeah, like I said, I just cannot test it, so I'm not sure. But I think it's okay, because once it dry, it shouldn't, shouldn't release any toxic toxicities anymore in the water. But yeah, you never know. So that's, uh, that's a risk that I'm going to take. So, and what I also did, you can see the residue of water there. I did soak them for a night. I wanted to be sure if I could measure something uh, drastic change, for example, in the pH or parts per millions, are there uh, substances or salts in there that they do release, the bricks, especially, of course, into the water. The pH did go up by about one point, so that's not that much. 
and there was I didn't clean them before, so there was a bit of dust and sand on there. So the parts of did raise up as well a little bit. I think it was about fifty or sixty parts per million, so not that much. And vendors do get more fertilized water anyhow, so that's that's not the end of the world. It's just a, a, a nice brick, fairly clean, and there's not much on there. And I also think that the bricks do soak up a little bit of water, and I think that's okay. That you will give an extra humidity to the roots for the days that I don't water them. So overall, I think we're going to be fine. And what I also have, you can see them here, is just a regular PVC pipe. At least that's how we call them. <laughs> and I did try to find this in the bedroom section <laughs> because I've, I thought uh, of drainage pipes. But yeah, obviously these are way too small for drainage. <laughs> you will have your uh, bedroom uh, clocked up very quickly or your toilet or your uh, shower. <laughs> So these are used for the electricity. So that's, if you are interested in these, you should uh, go for that section. And uh, luckily we have black ones because these go better with the pots, I think. So that's a plus as well. This is going to be a stake. Uh, let me quickly see. I did, yeah, here it is. I did burn two holes, as you can see in the pot. This will go in between the holes. And you will use a cable tie to secure it and I can secure the fender on these pipes. So that's, uh, that's the plan, that's the, the new setup. And hopefully uh, we will do better. So now I uh, need to uh, put the vendors in. So let's, uh, let's do this. So yes, you guys, uh, as you can see, I'm sitting on the floor because uh, like we just saw and discussed these uh, vendors, some of them are getting really uh, large and big. So I can use all the space uh, that I can get. Obviously, I do have my pots and my PVC pipe. I also have um, some different uh, uh, sizes of cable ties over here. So you never know. My wire that I like to use, the green one. In this case, I think the black one is a bit better because it doesn't uh, show up as well. But who knows? And uh, some cutter, cutting tools for the wire and for whatever needs to be, needs to be cut. <laughs> So let's go. First, I need to secure this uh, PVC pipe, like I said. And I uh, did show you the holes in here. So it should be uh, here. It's a bit on an angle. It's hanging over, but now we have the weight in the pot. So it should be fine. I cannot get it like this. Not, at least I didn't find a plan to do that, but I think it's okay if we uh, get it secured here. Let me see if the small ones do fit, small cable ties. So I'm pulling it smooth, oops, there we go. And I hope this is secure enough. Obviously I cannot put more holes in because I need the water to stay in there. So I cannot, yeah, I could do a few holes, maybe a little bit lower, but yeah, if this is enough, then I keep them uh, fairly high because otherwise I cannot water my plants, my vendors as I do. I let them soak overnight. So yeah, we don't need holes in the pot. <laughs> this, yeah, this, is, this should do the trick. This is uh, secure enough. So that's step one. Now we need to get them out of the face and get them in here. Uh, <laughs> let's see. This is the first one. This one has about seven kgs. It's a beautiful venda. I love it when my plants grow into uh, specimen sizes. And yeah, the vendas are absolutely stunning. I can see that we're just coming out of the winter because the leaves are a bit on the darker side. Yeah, I have a difficulty to give them enough light, but on the other hand, this one just did bloom. Maybe saw it in the intro. I think I did have the flower spikes on it, just did cut them off. But uh, yeah, so it's still blooming, so it has enough light to bloom. You can see that the leaves are a little bit dark, but that's, uh, that's okay. I cannot do any more about that. <laughs> I have already so many lights here, so I don't uh, want to invest in more grow light. Okay, meanwhile... <laughs> 
Yeah, here we go. I think I. It's now released from the stake. So I'm just gently trying to pull it out. There it comes. Oh yeah, and I did it after uh, watering. So the roots are nice and green, and then they are more flexible. So I, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think I did mention yet. But that's why the root system is uh, even darker. And I know there's some algae on there, but I did uh, water them. We have some old roots, but luckily more alive roots than roots. So I'm going to leave it. Yeah, you can imagine <laughs> that this is heavy. So yeah, I'm going to put it in the new pot. And I try to get the aerial roots in there as much as I can. Is this in frame? There we go. So you can see it's already filling this pot, but there's so much more room for it to grow and especially air movement because this, this phase, as you can see, it's fairly small <laughs> in comparison to the new pot. And I just have it, it now sitting on the brick. And I think I'm going to leave it like that so it's a bit more secure there. There's a bit, yeah. And I see an old leaf falling in. Let me grab it quickly. There's this rotting material. We don't want that in our pots. Uh, let me quickly check if I like this position for this one. Like this. Yeah, I think every root is in there. Are we still in frame? I think so. <laughs> it's a bit of a strange angle. So let me put this cakey behind the stake. So that the mother plant, yeah, can reach the stake a bit easier, like this, and I can even secure it up here. So I have it now about this level. There I will put, I think, a cable tie. I'm just going to try it. I never use cable tie for this uh, part. And here, or do I use the wire? Um, not completely sure. Maybe a big cable tie will be better. I'm not completely sure. I don't want to damage the fan, of course. Let's see if that works. Because if I, if I need to, uh, if I water them, the next day the water needs to come out, so I need to uh, have them uh, upside down. So that's why they need to be secured very well. But not too much, of course. I don't want to damage it. So I'm going to just going to See if it's going to work. Yeah, I think so. This is very, very nice and secured. Whoops. Like I said, it's hanging over a little bit in an angle, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm going to secure it here as well. And then it should be uh, nice and stable in the pot. Let me grab another cable tie. These things are so handy. Sorry for the noise. I use them for a lot of things. And I see a lot of uh, orchid growers use them for uh, mounting their orchids. Now this is sort of similar. <laughs> is that too high? Yeah, I think I'm going to put a tie here as well. Just to keep it nice in place. Don't want it pull it too hard, of course, but enough to keep it in in the place there. So yes, I think this should do it. Yeah, I like it. I really like it so far. <laughs> and this is how the face look on the inside. So yeah, I probably. Uh, Oh, you probably now know what I was referring to. This is so ugly. And I need to clean this every two to three weeks if I really want to keep it clean. So keeping uh, getting the fenders out and in and out. No, that's, that's not a, uh, a option. So uh, let's, uh, let's try a, a darker black pot. <laughs> so yeah, I thought you might uh, want to see do, uh, me do uh, one... Uh, one more, uh, also uh, a big one. This is my second biggest one. Um, probably the oldest one in my collection currently. Yes, it is. And it has two cakes. One beautiful cake over here. And behind uh, the orchids, the mother plant is another cakey. 
a very large root system, so we need another large pus. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I did already secure this PVC pipe, because we just uh, saw how I did this. Not easy, not easy, it's not difficult. <laughs> so let's get it off and try to uh, get this in a new home as well. Well, if, yeah, we have a cable tie ready. Because I, in a minute I only have one hand, so I like to have everything ready so I can grab it quickly. Let's see. Let's try to lift this as well. Yeah, there it goes. And you can see the algae is, is a lot of algae on here. These are dead, basically. Not all of them, but this part. Is it dead? No, only this part. So just a little bit of cleanup. So yeah, they are dark, but not all of them are dead. So just cutting a few old roots off. I think that it's just a few parts. I'm gonna quickly check this side. So yeah, kind of heavy. This one is a little bit light, more lightweight than the other one. Yeah, this doesn't have as many cakeys. This part, yeah. You see, so yeah, they really hate the LP. It's a little bit too much. So let's hope that's over now. I'm not convinced, but I hope it will get better. Yeah, so far, most of them are still alive. Quite nice and firm. So yeah, I think they definitely will benefit from some more air around those uh, roots. So let's see. Here goes number two. Luckily we have quite a lot of new fresh roots and I will try to put them in as well so they can start soaking up water as well. That one is a little difficult. Getting that one is in. Yeah. How are we doing here? Let me see. This one doesn't want to reach as easy. There we go. Bit of an angle again. But that's okay. It's okay. So let's secure this. And I hope you like your new home. <laughs> like this. Oh. There we go. <laughs> so I have as many roots, new roots in the pot as I can. There, and another tie over here. So you keep in place. <laughs> but oh yeah, like I said, I love it when these plants do get into specimen sizes. But the next challenge, you probably are we're already wondering how I'm going to put them on the shelves. I have no idea at this moment, because these spots are uh, quite uh, bigger than the vases. I will probably figure something out. <laughs> That's a uh, next challenge. So let's see, are you secure? Yeah, there's a little bit of movement, but that's okay. Yeah, I think this is good. Yeah. Some old leaves here. Let's take them out. Oops. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is good so for this one. So I'm going to uh, do the rest and then we will have a look if I did succeed uh, in finding a spot for them on the shelves. <laughs> so I see you in a bit. So this is the first thing I'm uh, running into. I don't expect many more, but. But like we discussed, I have two holes here, 
And the previous two vendors do have such a root system that it will keep them fairly in place. But this one doesn't have, it has a nice root system, but not that much. It's not that big yet. So this PVC bar, uh, pipe, as you can see, is uh, moving. And I should have known better, but I need another set of uh, holes here. So it will keep that uh, PVC pipe into place and thereby the vendor will be kept in place as well. So I'm going to uh, burn into uh, more holes in every uh, single pot to uh, get rid of this problem. Very easy, but uh, yeah, a little bit of extra work, which is not the end of the world, but yeah, we need to adjust it. So this uh, is what I was referring to. I did give them an extra hole, uh, an extra set of holes, I should say, to get an extra uh, cable tie in. And for some, I did even another one just to uh, stabilize the PVC pipe. And, uh, and that works. Now it cannot uh, wiggle anymore. And that was exactly what I needed, of course, to keep them in place. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look at them. So far, I really enjoy it. And you know what? I really love that I now can reach the roots. I can uh, not only cut them, but also with spraying. It's so much easier. So otherwise I would spray, uh, especially these cakeys way more because they were so compact in, in that phase that I now, I now have way more room to reach the roots. And like I said, if you see an old root, uh, for example, down here, uh, because this one had the darker roots we just saw, this is the yellow one, I can easily take them out. I did take out a few, but I think now we are good to go again. But that is very easy and very beneficial. So I can, uh, like I said, really uh, reach the roots. And you can see here the room I have to spray them, to keep my eye on the roots. So, and they have way more air around them. I think it's very beneficial for Fendas. So who knows that we can grow these roots a bit, even a bit better without that very nasty dark algae on there. Who knows? And down here, smaller ones. I also did, as you can see. Same setup, just the pots are a bit smaller. These look very well as well. We have some new roots coming. And this one even more down there, as you can see. So that looks very promising. We have another root coming there. So hopefully it goes down into the pot. And this is... I don't have tags yet. I will uh, we'll put the tags on here. Um, I didn't do that yet, but uh, so I, it's Vietnamica or something like that, this one. And these are my two Renateras. So I did try them in a semi-hydroponic setup, but as you can see, they didn't like it. They lost a lot of roots. Luckily, I had some arrow roots. Sadly, I just needed to break them. Also on this one, I can see that this tip is starting to grow. Plus... These leaves are very flimsy and clumsy. <laughs> clumsy. I could bend them almost in every different way where it's now impossible. If I try it, I will break them. So these are uh, getting stronger by the day, you guys. Absolutely. Is this one, this one I cannot even move anymore. This is the red one and this is my peach one. So yeah, these two do love it. These just started to... Uh, to get stronger. Like I said, it took one or two days and they already started because I could water the annual roots. They didn't have any roots more um, anymore in the pots. So yeah, these are slow growers, but I think I was just in time to save these two guys. <laughs> so I now, like I said, I'm not going to put the names on the pots because I think it uh, looks very nice and it's very convenient if uh, I film them because I don't like the tags hanging there, so I will use the pots. I think it's very easy. And now they have their names on the pots. Sorry for the glare, but it looks so much better. With the names, we can now read them. I had this on my glass faces as well. Some of you noticed and commented on it, but now we obviously can see them way better. And I really like it. I like the look of it. So that is um, my Dens Don Venda Densoniana orange, and this is the yellow one. And I hope today, <laughs> maybe this year, but I really hope that they will bloom someday. And then we are 
for sure if those are the right ones. As goes for my uh, Tessalata, of course. This should be the Alba version. You never know. But these guys I do know, the Renatheras, they did bloom. So I do know that I have the red variety in the pink one, or the orange, I'm sorry. And this is the Vena Pink number three. That means it's no ID and it's number three in my list. So it's not the third one that I did get. I, I was, uh, did get it as a, as a gift from Inter, but it's number three in my list. So for some reason I lost uh, number three or gave it away. I'm not completely sure. And then I re reuse that spot in my notes and then they get a number. And that's easy because uh, for my notes, but obviously if I'm filming, doing a blooming update, for example, and I quickly need to know if I have a name or not, I know as long as it says, or at least it says a number three or a number whatever, it's an OID. So that is uh, for me very convenient. Orange brown. It did came with a tag that said orange brown, so that's why it's still orange brown. Um, if I have it in bloom, this one uh, tried to bloom in uh, fall, I think, and didn't do so well. Uh, there should be a name for it. I did see it somewhere and I did lost it. But uh, once again, it did came with that tag. Then we have the Ren Ven Renda <laughs> Diomane. Never had it in bloom. But uh, my Ren and Thera didn't do well, so Citrina I had, but that, uh, that I did lose. But this one, did came without any roots. And look at it now. So it does do, does do so much better. It's a fairly large side. You can see that in the back. But this one. So it should be uh, able, able to bloom. Hopefully it doesn't uh, do this year. It does now have the root system for it. And then we have my Venda. Ancelot Maka. That is the huge one that I used for this intro as well. <laughs> My largest one, I think. One of the oldest, for sure. But it did came, didn't came with all these cakes. It did uh, make those in my care. So that's beautiful, I think. And this one is the oldest that I have. That is the yellow one. It does have a name. This has a cake here and a cake there. And I think it started another one, a small one. This is the uh, yellow one, like I said, the Venda uh, Prapatom Gold, the Prapatom Prapatom Gold. So, and that is uh, a yellow one. We see this uh, in my blooming updates. These two like to uh, bloom well. We did see the pink one, but the rest, uh, hopefully, we will see soon as well. So, uh, before we finish this video, let's do a quick uh, before and after. So this is how it looks before the chains, <laughs> and they were in the glass faces. And this is how it looks after the chains in their new pots. And personally, I love it. I absolutely love it. It does go so much better with all the other orchids as you can see in those dark black gray pots. Some are black. I think most of them are more of a very dark gray, to be honest. But yeah, it really, really suits my setup. So, uh, if you can see here as well, I have them all in these darker pots. Because I like that, personally. But yeah, the vendors do look so much nicer. And let's hope that the algae stays out of pots a little bit better than in the glass face. I think it should, because there's less light in there, I hope. So that's the main reason for the chains. And then, uh, like we discussed earlier, they become very top heavy. So I did have that uh, brick inside and from one thing it lead into another. And now I uh, even like the display so much better. So anyhow, thank you guys so much. As usual, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much, uh, like I said, for watching. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And of course, I really, really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.